Doctor's house today. I've been sick for the last week or so with a head cold and everything, so I'm feeling much better. Thank you for those that prayed for me. I uh, feel kind of like a small pony this morning. I'm a little hoarse, but we'll we'll manage to read here, okay? Uh, I have a letter here from the Youngs. It's a very exciting letter. It says, Dear Pastor Mills and folks at Shalom Baptist Church, he uh, puts a passage in here from Isaiah 40. It says, uh, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. That's from Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Uh, he kind of mentions this because these folks are getting up in years, and um, they're dependent every day on the Lord's for his strength. It says, We are so thankful to be serving a God who neither faints nor is weary. Therefore, he is able to give power to those who are faint and to increase their strength. Even those of us who are increased in age may renew our strength by waiting upon the Lord. As the Lord is increasing our ministries, we find ourselves with a great need to wait on him more and more for increased strength. After a couple of years, which seemed to be uh, like a little, was being accomplished in our relationship with the people, the Lord has begun to answer prayer and open doors for us to minister to those with hungry hearts for a number of years. In Acts 18, 9 and 10, it says, The Lord encouraged the Apostle Paul with these words, Be not afraid, but speak and, hold thy peace, and not hold thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. The words that stood out to us were, I have much need of people in this city. This gave us peace and confidence that there are still many souls here whom the Great Shepherd wants to bring into his fold. As we began giving out small cards with Bible verses to people with phones we charged, uh, where they are, there's not a lot of electrical outlets, you can just plug your phone in, so they have power here at the mission, so as people come by to plug their phones in, they give them a track and they give them a Bible verse card. So over the past few months, we've been meeting um, once a week with a small group of believers who are dissatisfied with the shallow teaching they're receiving elsewhere. Lewis, Amos, Mike, and Dallas share the responsibility of teaching. One ministry that we have specially prayed about was an opportunity to interact with the young men who spend their time gambling, smoking, and doing drugs. The Lord has begun to answer that prayer, and a week ago, 27 of those young men packed themselves into our small meeting room to hear teaching from God's Word. For an hour and a half, Lewis taught, and the men asked many, many questions. These young men have obviously been exposed to all kinds of teaching and are thoroughly confused. What a blessing to be able to show them the answers from God's Word. Lord willing, we will continue to meet with them on Sunday evenings. We are grateful for Amos' help in ministering to these young men. Several men have begun building the extension on the meeting room that will give us more space for people to meet, uh, as well as a storage space for the New Testaments. Praise God, the New Testaments have now arrived at the Port of Ley, and we are waiting for them to be passed through customs and be brought up to Garoka, uh, where the container will be stored. So I've, I, I do have pictures here. So these are cases and cases and cases of the new Bibles that uh, Brother Young translated into the native tongue. Um, it's okay. What? It's, it is the New Testament, yes. Um, it's a type of pidgin English that we would have no understanding of, but our dear brother spent many, many years doing this. The Bibles will soon be available um, out in the mission field. And here's an open case of them. But, um, it's something we've been praying about for quite a while, but they are on site and will be given out soon. Um, he goes on to say, we know that many of you want to help with the expenses of the printing of the New Testament, but before we're even able to have them printed, a gift was received, which paid the entire amount of printing and shipping them. So um, they still need some funds. Um, it will cost uh, to take 2,000 New Testaments uh, into Awina by plane. It will cost $800 just to have them transported from the port uh, up to the mission uh, where they're at right now. There are many missionaries in other churches, in other cities and villages, who are asking for the printed word. These Bibles are to be given at no expense to the people who receive them. It says if you'd like to give to this project, you can uh, contact them through their uh, home church. But I think it's just a blessing to get God's word out to people. We take it for granted. Um, 
You know, I don't know how many Bibles I have at home. I have some good ones and I have some not so good translations. Um, but the, uh, I have them on a shelf and several throughout the house. And, you know, they're, they're all in, in my language of English. But to have it in your mother tongue of pidgin English, I think would be a, a great blessing. We hope for many souls to be saved and people to mature in the gospel. Well, just remember these things this morning. Just remember the, the youngs this morning. Heavenly Father, just... Uh, uh, it's amazing how you use people, Lord, that um, surround themselves. A Calvary's mountain, one dreadful morn, while Christ my Savior, weary and worn, facing for sin. Death on the cross That he might save them From endless loss Father forgive them Thus did he pray In while his life's blood Flowed fast away Praying for sinners while in such woe, no one but Jesus ever loved so. Oh, how I love him, Savior and friend. How can my praises ever find end? Through years unnumbered on heaven's shore, my tongue shall praise him forevermore. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, seems now I see him on Calvary's tree. Wounded and bleeding for sinners pleading, blind and unheeding, dying for me. Take your Bibles, be turning to the book of Proverbs this morning, chapter 30. The book of Proverbs chapter 30. Uh, some will say again this morning that I appreciate all of our young people here in the church and um, you know years ago in the old country southern churches they always used to have the amen bench that's where all the men would sit they'd sit up front preacher would preach and they'd amen 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 and uh, I don't know that went away somewhere along the way We've got a pretty good amen bench right here at the church when these kids are up here singing. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, I never want it to become the kids' show. But I never want to tell them to not sing out either. I'd never throw cold water on their fervor. And um, I mean, I stand up here and I, I, folks, I can't sing a lick, but I try. 
and I try to sing out and I look down there and they're just locked on me they're just watching me <laughs> and uh, I think well be an example right and so whether you can sing or whether you can't just rear back and let her rip buddy I mean these kids have no shame why should we and uh, uh, but uh, praise the Lord they're the next generation folks and uh, I want to teach them to enjoy. I, I love coming to church. I do. I love coming to church. And um, I, I think it's great to see them want to be here. And um, uh, but anyway, Proverbs chapter thirty. I've got I've got something that's in my mind today, and it's been on my heart uh, for well for some time. And I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'm going to try to convey it to you this morning. Proverbs chapter 30, look at verse 5. What a tremendous verse of Scripture that we have here in the Proverbs. The Bible says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Father, this morning, thank You for Your Word. And I thank you, Father, that we can trust it. You are faithful, and your word is pure. It's true. And I'm so glad we can depend on it. And we don't have to be uh, taken by surprise at the events of our world today. I'm glad we've got a sure word of prophecy, and we hold it in our hands. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, the Bible says every word of pure, uh, word of God is pure. So I want to ask you this morning, how many words of God are pure? They're all pure. Every one of them. And we can trust them. Folks, I don't have to wonder what they are. I don't have to wonder which Bible's have it and which Bibles don't and can I say in some part maybe all of the Bibles out there in some part contain some parts of the Word of God but I'm glad we can have all of the Word of God it's not lost I don't have to depend on some scholar to, uh, to tell me what is the Word of God and what is not the Word of God I have it this morning and folks, you and I can trust in and say, Preacher, where are you going? To? But I, this is not a message on where the Word of God is today, that or the other. Uh, it's it, it not. Uh, but my thought is, has been this for some weeks now, especially uh, with the things that are escalating today in our world. Uh, the things going on in the Middle East and, and, and folks, it's just bleeding out all over our planet today. The rise of anti-Semitism, the, the desire to do away with the Jewish people. I'm glad I'm on the right side of that fight, folks. I'm on God's side. It's God's people and you're never going to do away with them. But where do you get your information today is where I'm coming from this morning. You know, uh, whether you're liberal and you get your information from one side of the media today, or whether you're conservative and you get it from the other side of the media today, and, and I look at it, folks, and I don't care which side you get it from, they're all getting it wrong. They all get it wrong. And I don't care which side of the, uh, the issue that you're from as, as far as where you get your, your, your information from. Uh, listen, I've heard both sides talk about, well, God is on our side. And you listen to some of the things that they say. And, and if you've got any Bible sense at all, you, 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 your antennas start going up. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Something's wrong here. Um, last week, does anybody remember how many points my message had last week? Seven. 
17. I cut it down. I didn't get finished last week in the morning. I've cut it down today. I've only got 10 points today. <laughs> but folks, what I want to do is just give you some basic truth from the Bible. It's a simple message today. It's not going to be deep. It's not going to be profound. But folks, it's going to be the Word of God. Every word of God is pure. And so when you hear some things today like, well, six billion years ago, or a hundred billion years ago, or whatever it was, we there was this big earth, uh, not earthquake, big bang, and and then all of a sudden the the universe was flung out into space, and and there was these slime pits and these. Uh, creatures crawling around in them then they crawled out and their tails fell off and a hundred billion years later boom here we are that's science right it may be what some scientists tell you today folks but it's not what the word of God says and you hear that from both sides I want to go down the middle. I want to find out where the Word of God is, and that's where I want to stand. Folks, the Bible tells us that the world was made in six days by an almighty creator. And I believe that. Six literal 24-hour periods. And on the seventh day, he rested. This almighty creator is omniscient. He knows everything. Folks, he's not sitting in the heavens today, uh, wringing his fingers, twiddling his thumbs, wondering, oh, oh what am I going to do next? No, he's an almighty God. He knows everything. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about me. Nothing's taking him by surprise. He's, he's an omnipresent God. He's everywhere. I'm glad he's in this room today, folks. So how do you know he's here? Because he come with me when I came. And if you know him as your savior, he came with you too because he indwells you. Folks, he's everywhere at, at, at all times. There's no place that he's not present. Our Bible teaches us that. He's omniscient. He's om, om, omnipresent. Uh, he's omnipotent, which means, folks, he's all powerful. Well, say he, this world couldn't have been spoken into existence in six 24, little, little 24 hour period of time. Oh, yes, he could because he can speak it into existence. I'm going to say to you, he didn't need six 24 hour days to do it. He could have done it in a moment, in an instant, but that's what he chose to do. He's omnipotent, folks. He has all power today. I'm. I'm concerned about world events and what's happening, but I, you know, I'm on the backside of, of my life. Um, thank you, Rita. <laughs> the first amen I've ever got out of this crowd. I'm on the backside of my life. Amen. <laughs> And I, I'm not real concerned, you know, f what the future's going to hold. Uh, I don't know how many years I got left. I, you know, I, I want to live. I, I got a desire to live. God's put that in me. But when he says it's done, it's done, folks. I think about my children. I think about my grandchildren and the world that they're going to have to grow up in. I want them to grow up knowing that there's an omnipotent God that is still in control. Amen. No matter what. Folks, you and I owe it to them to teach them that. But there's a world out there that is, they, they've, they're confused. They got all kinds of, 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 of ideas and, and where they get their ideas from, and usually from lost people. And, and, and they try to tell us, well, God can't be this and God can't be that. Well, don't tell me my God can't be. Because my Bible tells him 
tells me that he can. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's all power. Can I say this to you this morning about our almighty creator who is eternal? He's still holy and just. He's a holy God, folks, and he's not compromising his standards today. Man may compromise his standards today, but you mark it down. Our God will not compromise. He's faithful. He's steadfast. He's unmovable. He's always abounding. That's our God. And folks, he still demands that of you and me today, holiness. He says in several passages of Scripture, Be ye holy, for I am holy. We're his children. We're to take on the character of our God. Now, we're not going to become gods. You know what I mean. Every day we should be coming more and more and more like Jesus Christ. The closer we get to him, the more holy we should be coming in our lives. Now, folks, we won't reach perfect holiness in this lifetime, but we ought to be striving for it. Be ye holy, for I am holy. I'm glad this morning that this holy and just God that we have. And, and, and by the way, folks, when I say he's just. Listen, folks, I, I, I hear people say if, if God is a just and loving God, why does he allow this or why does he allow that? And, and I could give you some examples of, of some of the, the, the things that they say. I'm going to say to you, folks. Uh, listen, God is just no matter what happens. All of these things happen is because we've turned our back on an almighty and just God. I can tell you in one word for all of the ills in society today, and it's a little three-letter word called sin, S-I-N. And that's the reason. But having said that we have a holy and just God, I'm glad that he's merciful and compassionate today. The Bible tells us in the book of Lamentations, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Listen, folks, we ought to get up every morning. Every morning that God allows us to wake up, we ought to thank him for his compassion. We ought to thank him for his mercy. I'm glad that I'm not consumed. It's, but the only reason I'm not is because of his mercy and his compassion. Listen, folks, he is king over all, and he is working all things after his own will according to his eternal plan. And I'm going to say to you this morning, everything is right on schedule. Mm -hmm. Amen. God won't be early. He won't be late. He'll be on time. That's the God we serve, folks. And I'm going to tell you, uh, the world today, those outside of Jesus Christ, they don't understand that about our God. They don't understand it. Another thing about him, man was made in the image of God and his created purpose is to love him and to glorify him. Folks, you and I were created in God's image and he created us to glorify him. Blessed be your name, O Lord. That's our purpose. And so, um, I, well, how do we spend our time? If we were created by God, we were created in his image. And, you know, I, I, you ask, sometimes you ask young people, young Christian people, well, what do you want to do with your life? Or, or even if it's somebody maybe up in age or whatever, what do you want to do with your life? Well, I want to glorify God. Well, that's wonderful. How do you do that? Well, you make him the center of your universe. 
And everything centers around God. Everything in my life flows from the life of God. And it ought to bring glory to his name. Every man is accountable to God. You and I will give an account of how we lived our life, whether you're saved or whether you're unsaved. Every, every saved man will stand at the judgment seat of Christ and he will receive a reward of the things that he done in his body, whether it were good or bad, profitable or unprofitable. That's for the saved man. Oh, but listen to me. Every unsaved man will stand at a place called the great, the great white throne of God. And it's where every unsaved individual will stand. And he'll give an account of his life. And at the end of that judgment seat, he will be cast into a lake of fire because of his rejection of Jesus Christ. Folks, you won't hear the media tell you that today. The Bible says in Romans 11 and verse 36, I preached a message out of this passage. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. You see, folks, we were created in the image of God. We were created to glorify him. We weren't created to go out and just do our own thing. You know, it's not Burger King. Have it your way. That is Burger King, right? I think so. I, Here's another thing that's true today. And I think this is the third one. All men are sinners against God's holy laws. And we're under his judgment. Well, what do we do to get that way? You were born. You didn't do anything to get that way. We have, a, we have an inherited sin nature. We got it from our father Adam. And through him it flowed to every individual that has ever been born. We're sinners against God's holy laws. Say, which one? All of them. We'll start with the Ten Commandments. We can start at the top. And, and folks, we've broken every one of them. How many... How many lies do, does a person have to tell before he's a liar? We know where all liars go, right? We've just broken his laws, folks. We're condemned sinners. That's what this pure word of God tells us. The Bible says in many places, and I chose Ecclesiastes 7.20, For there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Listen, folks, if every word of God is pure, we have to believe what it says right there. We're all without Christ. We're all undone apart from Jesus Christ. Here's another one. Uh, there, <laughs> boy, they are. How many of you heard any conspiracy theories lately? Uh, just two of us, three of us. But conspiracy theories, I, they're, they're at them. Uh, I hear new ones every day. <laughs> but you know what the ultimate conspiracy theory is? And folks, it's not really a theory; it's a truth that Satan. And the dark powers are in control of this present world system. It's fallen angels who have rebelled against God. Uh, and, and we see the working of it today. And boy, try saying that on the news media today. You'll be laughed off TV. You'll be called some kind of crazy person. But if the word of God is true, Isaiah 14 and verse 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? O, uh, for, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will sit upon the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Verse 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Hold on just a second. I need some water. The, 
those dark powers today that are working in our world. It's called the mystery of iniquity and it doth already work, folks. Listen, the devil is doing everything that he can to destroy men's lives. Listen, folks, it's of the devil that the world by and large wants to destroy Israel today. Listen, if he could destroy Israel, he could discount this book. And there's an all-out war against God's people today. The ultimate goal is in this wicked world system, uh, it's going to put an evil man uh, on the throne of this world one day. And he's coming. Folks, I believe he's alive today. Uh, uh, but ultimately, the Antichrist and Maybe I'll say a little bit more about him in a few minutes. But folks, that's not a conspiracy theory today. That's what the truth is. Lucifer, the fallen angel, and all those that fell with him today. The, the prince of the power of the air today. And it is working today, folks. Somebody said he's alive and well. Well, he's alive, but he's not well. But at the same time that these dark forces are working in our world today, folks, God still has his program today. The preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ all around this world. The presentation of the gospel, the invitation that whosoever will believe in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. That's God's plan today. It's been in uh, 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 his plan. Uh, well, it began before time, but as time goes, uh, it began at the death and burial, the resurrection, the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. That mandate that he gave five times in 40 days, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In the midst of, of, of the dark evilness of Satan and all that he's trying to do, God is sending forth light into the world today to tell people of his dear son that if we'll believe in him, we'll put our faith and trust in him, we'll repent, we can have our sins forgiven. The book of Acts is a record of the beginning of that program, and it remains in business unto this very day. God's plan is still for God's people to go out and plant churches all across this planet. And there's going to be a battle. There's going to be a spiritual battle that takes place because Satan is at odds with God's plan and he wants to defeat it, but he never will. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm glad I'm on the winning side. So God's working out his plan. That's the fifth thing that I want you to know. Here's another thing. Christ said to his apostles, and to those that he sent out, that false churches would multiply in the day in which we live. But wouldn't it just be great if all the churches were just pure and right down the line doctrinally? And, and, and wouldn't that just be wonderful today? But it's not true, folks. But Jesus said it would be that way. That they'd be false preachers and false teachers and false uh, uh, prophets in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 he said now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times folks that's the times in which we live some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron 2 Peter 2 and verse 1 but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who probably shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. 
1 John chapter 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. In Matthew 24, verse 24, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3, For the time shall come when they'll not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers, uh, teachers having itching ears. And so, folks, the, uh, God said it would be that way. In Matthew 7, uh, what, what, a, what a sobering uh, passage this is in Matthew 7. And beginning in verse 22, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So many in, in, in the day when they stand before Lord, 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 we did many wonderful things. We prophesied, and what I believe prophesying is in this passage, if we preached in thy name. We cast out devils in thy name. And the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you, you workers of iniquity. So folks, don't be surprised. Look at, how did, but so how do we know the difference? How do we know the difference in a good church and one that's not so good? Remember folks, every word of God is pure. So you try everything by the Bible. And that's how you know. Let me give you another one. I'm on seven already. But before I give you that one, uh, we we're, t we're talking about the false churches, the false prophets. The Bible prophesied it would be so. It's called uh, the great apostasy, a turning away from the faith. It's going to increase throughout this age. We're going to see more and more and more of it. But folks, I want to assure you, there are always going to be a good church to go to. There will always be one. I build my church. The gates of hell not prevail against it. But we see this taking place. And, and, and the word of God told us it would be that way. It ought not to surprise us when it happens. So what is our hope? <laughs> what is our hope? Listen, folks, this present, I'm, I'm what's called a dispensationalist, okay? I believe in dispensations. And the dispensation in which we are living in right now, uh, some people call it the, the, the dispensation of grace, the age of grace. Well, I like to call it the dispensation of the church. Listen, we've always lived under grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But we're in right now what I like to call the dispensation or the age of the church. But mark it down, folks. That age is coming to an end. You say, preacher, is that a bad thing? No, that's a good thing. That's a wonderful thing. It's an event called the catching away or what we know, what we call as the rapture. <coughs> and I've had people say, well, the word rapture is not in the book, but the word catching away is. And it's a translate, rapture is a transliteration of that word. It's an imminent meaning. It means it could happen at any time. I believe it'll be unexpected in this world. I mean, men are going to be going along about their business, and it's going to happen, and God's going to call his people out of here. It, it'll be like a thief in the night. It'll be a time when people aren't looking for it. And I know if I ask this question, how many are looking for the coming of the Lord? We're all going to raise our hands, right? We're looking. Well, not many of us are. Are y'all awake? How many of us are looking for the coming of the Lord? Amen. Thank you. How many of you think it's going to be today? Amen. See? 
unexpected, a time when you think not. It's going to happen. But folks, it is going to happen. Remember, every word of God is what? It's pure. It's pure. So what does the Bible say about it? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, or will not go before them. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. I say, you ought to be quiet in church. Oh, when Jesus comes, it's going to be with a shout. Listen, folks, we'll hear his voice. It'll be a distinct voice. He'll descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then look at it. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. That's the rapture. That's the, the catching away with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You know, I... At most funerals I ever preach, I read this passage of Scripture, and I like it. And I've got my own little interpretation of it, and whether it's true or not, I don't know. But uh, it, it, it's talking about those that have gone on before, before that catching away, before the rapture, they're already with the Lord. The Lord's going to come back. He's going to bring those with him in the clouds. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Those who've already gone before. You know, folks, the longer I live, the more precious heaven becomes. I mean, it's precious anyway because of Jesus. I got to tell you, folks, the longer I live, the more people I know that's already on the other side. And I believe when this event happens, there. Now, just bear with me. Well, I, I don't know if this. I, I'm not this. I'm not dogmatic on this point. All right, but I believe they're going to come back with the Lord in the in in the air. He's going to catch us up together with them in the clouds, and I believe He's going to give us a little reunion time. Well, we're going to be back to be with our loved ones that have gone on before. And then we'll be ushered into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. When's the last time you ever heard that in the media today? <laughs> it's going to happen. Isn't that exciting? That Jesus is going to come back. And he's going to take us out of here. Well, that's still not the end I'm glad I know Jesus. The next thing that's going to happen immediately after that, I believe Satan's man will come on the scene. He's called the Antichrist. He's called the man of sin. He's called the son of perdition. At first, when he comes on the scene, he's going to pretend to be a great peacemaker. Listen, folks, what is the world clamoring for today? Peace. We need somebody to bring peace to this mess. I mean, you hear the you, you hear the awful, awful things that, that take place. Well, that can't be the way it should be. Somebody that'll bring peace. A global problem solver. He's going to act after we're gone. And the world's looking for him right now. He's going to make a covenant with Israel. He's going to confirm the covenant. Daniel chapter 9 says that word confirm means that he'll just strengthen it. Folks, I believe the covenant's already on the table. We just need someone to come along and say, here's how it works. Here's how we can make this peace treaty work. He's going to allow a third temple to be built. Uh, the world's going to cry, peace, peace thinking that this new age of peace has come upon us. But folks, it's not peace. Not at all. We're going to think prosperity has begun. You know, make America great again. What does that mean? 
What well, means make America rich again, make America prosperous again, bring the gas prices down to two dollars a gallon, and bring the, the egg prices back down to 99 cents. And I'm for it. But I don't hear anybody saying make America godly again. It's a false peace. Three and a half years of it. Antichrist is going to show his true character. Men are going to worship him on the pain of death. Now remember folks, we're gone. Right? Rapture's taking place. We're out of here. This is what's called in, in the tribulation period. And after three and a half years, Antichrist is going to show his true character. At that time, the world's going to experience trouble like it's never known before. God is going to be pouring out his judgment on the nations because of sin. Billions of people are going to die on the earth when that takes place. Seven year period, the tribulation period. It's the 70th week of Daniel. It's the 490th year. And then we come to the end of that period. Three and a half years after Antichrist sets himself up as God, Christ is going to return. Amen. I want to close out this morning reading you some scriptures from Revelation chapter 19. I mean, this is, this is yet a future event. We've been talking about some, uh, the rapture's a future event. The, uh, I, I, everything that, that we've talked about after that point is a future event. This is too, but look at it. Verse 11 of chapter 19. The Bible says, and I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. You see? The Word of God. Here it is at the beginning of it all. The Word of God. Uh, at the ending of it all. The Word. It was there at the beginning. It's there at the end. His name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Now, who is that army with him upon those white horses? It's the saints, folks. It's those that have been caught up in the rapture. And now he's coming back on a white horse. He's leading his armies. And there we are with him on white horses. How many of you like to ride horses? Well, if you don't, get used to it. <laughs> ah. His armies that fall upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of wrath of Almighty God. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's our king, folks. That's our Lord. He's coming back to set things right. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of the kings and the flesh of the captains, the flesh of the mighty men, the flesh of the horses and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Look at this, verse 20. I, I was reading this this, this weekend. Uh, first time I ever saw it like this. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought the miracles before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. And, 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 and I was reading, it, reading that, and you know, it's, it's describing a war, it's describing a battle that's taken place. And these, the, these, the Antichrist, the false prophets, and they're the leaders down here, and Jesus come back, and the Bible says, and he just takes them. 
I like that. He just takes them. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. The remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Oh, oh. It's describing we're coming down toward the end. Now drop down into verse 20. I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. Now we're going into the millennial kingdom. The, 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 the tribulation period has ended. Now we're going into the millennial kingdom. He's cast into a bottomless pit a thousand years. And he shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark, on their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years <laughs> yea those that gave their life for the testimony of Jesus Christ they're still alive and I'm glad for their testimony but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such Second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And, and here's the thing, folks. You think about it. You ever thought, no, oh, I'd like to go back to the Garden and eat, Garden of Eden and just, boy, if I'd have been Adam and Eve, I wouldn't have made that mistake. Yeah. Well, yeah, you probably would have. But you think about it, after a thousand years of perfect rule on earth, Satan is going to be loosed and he's going to go out and he's going to deceive the people again. After a thousand perfect years reign of Christ and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whom's faith the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. We win. So folks, you look at all that's going on in our world today and you think it's hard to make sense out of it. No. God's got a plan. Don't give up on His plan. See, we like to help God sometimes, don't we? we? Well, God needs a little help here. It's not going, it's not according, going according to my plan. And, and we try to change things around. Well, well, maybe the Bible really don't mean that. Maybe it means something else. No, stick to the pure word of God. It's right on time. And folks, these evil dark forces today, they're going to be banished forever and ever and ever. You imagine when we get to heaven, I don't know if we're going to ride down the streets of gold or we're going to walk down the streets. Well, what we're going to ride down them on? No, they leak oil. <laughs> Maybe a gold wing. 
I don't know, maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be the chariots led by, but however we go down the streets of gold. You imagine going down, there's going, they're not going to be any billboards that you have to turn your head away from because it's an embarrassment to look at. Never going to have to go to work and hear the people at work tell another dirty joke. You'll never hear God's name taken in vain again. No blasphemy there. Every thought's going to be pure. Every heart will be pure. You know, I, I know people today, Christians, man, you start talking about living holy lives and, boy, they get a little nervous about that. How are you going to make it in heaven when everything is holy? What a day. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Folks, don't be discouraged about the things going on today. God's got a plan and it will not be thwarted. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.